Hello, I'm Tim Burkhead. I'm a Professor of Zoology and Animal Behaviour at the University of Sheffield. And I've been studying guillemots here on Scoma for the last 40 years. This colony behind me, which I call the Amos, uh, has been our main study site uh, for most of that time. And a large proportion of the birds that you can see there on the cliffs uh, bear colourings that we place on them, either as adults or as chicks. And it's those colourings that allow us to monitor the population in great detail. By ringing the birds as chicks, we can also tell how old they are when they first start to breed. And guillemots are surprisingly old when they first start to do that. Uh, the average age is about seven. One or two start at four, but a few might take until they're 10 to find a partner, which is rather remarkable. And by piecing all those bits together, we can figure out how the population as a whole works. And it turns out, that the scoma population is actually fairly self-contained. So the chicks that are produced here, most of them, not all of them, but most of them come back and breed here. So for the last 20 or so years, the population's been growing at a rate of about 5%. So there's now about 25,000 pairs of guillemots breeding on scoma, which sounds great considering the fact that in the 1970s when I started, there were just 2,000. But it's a mere shadow of what there was in the 1930s when there was around 100,000. The beauty of doing a long-term study like this is that you get tremendous insight into the way the birds function, how their populations work, and the things that are important to them. The risk with a short-term study is that you only look at a tiny snapshot of what's happening. By doing this for 40 years, you see a lot of the kind of changes. Between about 1970 and uh, until about five years ago, breeding got earlier and earlier each year and until birds were breeding about two and a half weeks earlier than they had in the 1970s. But in the last two or three years, breeding's been all over the place and we've had the two latest seasons we've ever had and the earlier season in adjacent years. So there's no consistency and I think that that might be related to climate change. This year was a particularly late year and it could be that the so-called seabird wreck that killed about 40,000 birds in February this year was responsible for that. The winter storms that were so persistent uh, stopped the birds from being able to feed successfully, so many of them starved to death, but even the survivors probably took quite a long time to recover their body condition, and that might explain why breeding was late. It takes quite a lot of effort to keep a, a study like this going for 40 years. Funding is often uncertain and you have to find people to help with the field work and so on. But I'm hoping that in the next few years we'll find a source of funding that will allow this study to continue, hopefully, for another 40 years. Mm -hmm.